Hi, everybody. Anybody watching? Hi. Welcome, welcome to Urban Shadows. Welcome, welcome to our first, our first Urban Shadows game of this wonderful new campaign that I'm so excited uh, to, to be bringing y'all and introducing a bunch of my friends who have never played Urban Shadows before and spreading how much I love this game. Uh, yeah, to start out with, why don't, why don't we go around and uh, y'all can introduce yourselves. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> Dude, tell us what you do, um, kind of where folks can find you, and then any anything else you find, feel like sharing. Sure thing. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll hop on uh, this little grenade first. Uh, yeah, hey everybody, I'm Zan. I'm a professional DM, content creator uh, for Five V World of Darkness, powered by the Apocalypse, and a whole bunch of other absolutely awesome games out there. Um, you can find me floating around a couple of different channels, whether it's uh, Polished Scripted or the Black Feather Guild or uh, my own channel, Insanity TTRPG. Um, uh, you know, doing doing the t the the tabletop the tabletop game, uh, pretty much wherever uh, wherever folks are going to have me, and looking forward to getting some stuff going uh, on my channel real soon. And uh, pa uh, Patrick, do you, do you want me to go into a little bit of detail about the character, or are we are we saving that for another time? Um, fuck it. Let's let's do it now. Let's, let's oh, just do it right now. Unless you would, unless you would pr prefer to save it for another time. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it might be a more apt time. A little, a little while. Okay. Uh, we'll we'll, we'll, buy, we'll buy. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and buy you a few, a few minutes yeah, sure. of reprieve there. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, it's not that I wasn't planned. It's not that I did that. That I was coming into this with with no character concept, which is. No, it's <laughs> no. Not I need either. I need the extra two minutes to build the character. Awesome, uh, historian. Would you like to Would you like to go next? Sure. I mean, it's process of elimination, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, hi, I am IC historian. IC historian, all of the places I feel like being found on the internet. Uh, yeah, I hang out here with Patrick now uh, on Sundays for a while, and every other. Uh, Saturday, I play in a new campaign for a game called End Times on Polish Cryptid's channel. And yeah, I mean, I am not a professional RPG anything. I just sort of hang out with anyone who has let their security uh, go lax. Enough for me to sneak in. No. Why it's LAX I... Google, not Henrietta Lax. <laughs> Awesome. Yes, and it, it's uh, you can find links to uh, both of these. Uh, yeah, words. I'm sorry. Words are hard tonight. You can find everybody's Twitter's li Twitter links in in the chat, and get get used to this mess of words coming from this mouth tonight. It's gonna be, it'll be a little rough. Uh, yeah. So, um, Urban Shadows. That is the game we're gonna be playing tonight. Uh, it, we are playing the second edition, which is still in its, um, I don't know if you would say infancy, Kickstarter, quick start mode. It's the, it is, the Kickstarter has finished and was successful, lots of funding for it, and we are st still kind of working through uh, whatever is between playtesting and finalized material. So it's, I'm... I'm excited to play with all of the new the new bits and pieces from second edition that were not in first. Um, but yes, if you are not familiar with uh, Urban Shadows, it is a dark political urban fantasy game. Uh, so think a little bit like think sort of along the lines of like The Wire, but with like vampires and fairies and werewolves and shit in it. Um, Yes, and it's the kind of what we'll be doing in that game. The three the three major points are keep the city dark and political, keep the characters' lives out of control and evolving, and play to find out what happens. That in that includes me as the MC. I have no plans going into this. I do not have a specific story to tell. Um, everything is gonna be you know reactionary based on what my lovely players do. Um. Yeah, I think that is all of the basics we need to know about the system. It is, again, for folks who aren't familiar with it, it is a Powered by the Apocalypse type game, so we are going to be sticking with our D6s. Everything will be 
a 2d6 roll plus some cool stat that our players have. Um, would y'all like to introduce your... Tell us a little bit about your characters, then I will... I'll start us out with a poll, and then we'll we'll dive on in. Does that sound okay? Zan, why don't why don't we why don't we come back to you? Oh, we're we're coming back to me. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, that's cool. That's fine. I I didn't just uh, use that entire time uh, twiddling twiddling my thumb. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be playing the uh, the vamp which is going to be a lovely time given that I I, mm, I don't want to say thrive but I really enjoy um, emotionally manipulative characters um, as I'm sure both of these uh, wonderful humans who have played numerous games with me uh, could probably attest <laughs> um, yeah so uh, I'm going to be playing uh, a lovely little uh, lovely little not young but a lovely man named uh well, called by most, uh, Don. Uh, you might know him as a uh, HRD or uh, a couple of other different uh, little little stage names he goes by here and there. Uh, he is a still minor league, but are still indies, but uh, definitely well known in the indie wrestling scene uh, as the ultimate heel. Um, there's nothing that he won't do to keep you, you to keep him on your mind uh, while you talk about the terrible things he did in Ring. And, you know, if uh, that's how someone's got to eat, that's how someone's got to eat. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, we have, yep, we've got Zan as our vampire. And then historian, who t tell us all who you are playing, what what playbook you're using, and tell us all about him. Alrighty, so I'll be playing the Oracle, and uh, her name is Olive Jones, and she runs a curiosity shop slash tourist trap slash place where people actually deal in questionable artifacts of questionable origin and questionable potential power abilities um she has a uh she kind of showed up in uh ruby tooth bay like randomly uh and has a shop on the water that is a favorite spot of drunken bachelorette parties spring breakers and um frat bro idiots who you know want to buy a totally real human skull. Uh, she also has a deal going with Don where uh, she displays his merchandise in exchange for him literally never showing up at her place of business. So she makes sure that other people think of Don uh, in order to keep him from making his presence known around her. So, yeah. There you go. She's kind Steve, of like, you, what? I'm still on your mind even then. Even, you know, the conspicuous absence is still a presence. Mm -hmm. And isn't my presence always a present? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, you know, one of the one of the, the major um, aspects of the game, which y'all alluded to just there, which I should introduce, is the debts. Which, um, debts are the currency of Urban Shadows. They're we don't worry about like money or specific values of things. The major currency in the paranormal or supernatural underworld is owing people favors. Um, so part of character creation, which we have already accomplished, is our characters all owe each other or are owed each other debts. And are, there's lots of messy entanglements and shit already there. Kind of the, the tagline of Urban Shadows is really, how can this situation get messier? And let's make that happen. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're, we have half of our cast here tonight with us for the premiere. We've got two more lovely characters as well that the real world is currently keeping away from us for the time being, but they will be joining us in next week. Um, and they have, obviously, their characters are also already entangled and in the weeds with the two that you will meet here tonight. Are you telling me it's not a conspiracy theory that 
the power is is mysteriously absent from the table. They're playing the power, right? Hmm? They're they're playing the power. No, so power is um, <laughs> just to let's dive into a little bit more oh, of Urban Shadows here. Um, the the major players in the supernatural world are broken up into four major groups or circles. Uh, you've got Mortalis, which those are folks that do not have any special powers or anything crazy like that, but they are aware of and working in the supernatural world. Um, so those might be like folks like your classical supernatural hunters or like veterans who are in the supernatural world but have reached too old for this shit stage and are one day away from retirement and all that. Um, you've got your power circle, which Zan was alluding to, in which Olive, our oracle, is a member of. Uh, power is essentially still mortals, but they've got powers. Um, you know, that includes your wizards, your oracles, your spooky cult leaders that, you know, draw power from the faith of their followers, that kind of thing. Uh, Zan, Zan's character Don, is a member of Night, uh, which is your vamps, your werewolves, your revenants, your ghosts. All of the things that were human at one point and are now no longer quite human. Um, so they, they experienced humanity and no, not, not anymore. They got, they got more going on now. Um, and our last group, our last circle is Wild, which actually both of our other two characters are members of Wild that you'll be meeting next week. Uh, those I include, essentially Wild are your folks that are super alien, you know, foreign to humanity in general. So your fairy folk are all in wild. Um, your vessels, stuff like golems, living statues, that kind of thing would fall under wild. And then demons and their tainted servants fall under wild as well. But yeah, those are essentially everybody that is anybody in the, that is anybody worth knowing in Ruby Tooth Bay falls under one of those circles and has a bunch of connections under those circles. Um, which reminds me about some a point I wanted to make. Y'all, y'all noticing maybe may have noticed that Ruby Tooth Bay sounds a lot like Ruby Tuesday, and you may you may be thinking, hey, that had to be intentional, right? When y'all were naming this fictional city, you must have noticed that and made it happen on purpose. Um, to which I say that that's a lot of judgment you're putting on us here. Um, I did not notice that name. <laughs> Um, but fuck it, we're rolling with it now. It is, it is Ruby uh, Tooth Bay. Pat, Patrick, you said us, and listen, I, I feel like that's an unfair umbrella term. I'm, I'm just saying, I I may have been responsible for this name initially, but it, it was shared with the group before it was shared anywhere else, and no one else caught on. <laughs> but yes, so. Accident did not intend to sound like Ruby Tuesday. If Ruby Tuesdays would like to answer, offer us a sponsorship at any point, we could maybe throw some rumors or supernatural happenings around Edla's salad bars. We're not above that. Um, I will absolutely yes. lie about the quality of their food for a sponsorship. <laughs> I will look me in my heart. Look me in my heart, internet. I will do that. That is a thing that I will do. Raycon earbuds will be the greatest earbuds in all of human history if you would like to sponsor us on this channel. <laughs> but yes, um, Ruby Tooth Bay, um, being a fictional city, yeah, we should probably tell you all about where it is. It is a kind of your classic uh, Florida Gulf Coast uh, vacation -y town. So it gets very, gets very busy for stuff like spring break, summer, all, all of that. And then, you know, a bit deserted the rest of the year. Um, except for our, our lovely supernatural crew that lives and thrives in the city all year round. All right, y'all let me know. Am I, am I missing anything else we need here to set up? I think we covered everything. I think we're good. Uh, do we want to talk about the, the current power dynamics of the, the city at all or any, um, any cool happening places, or do we just want to find that out in fiction i think pla i think places we could figure out in fiction um rumors we could dive into the rumors if y'all would like to y'all could like give us a quick cap on like the current the current haps that y'all are involved in that might be worth doing right now uh part of urban shadows which is something i dragged over from first edition which may or may not still be in second is um, we made rumors just to get our characters involved in plotting and bullshit in this city before we even started play. 
Um, so each of them got to decide, got to create a specific rumor about one of the circles in the city. Um, and then they ro they rolled to see how far in the, in the thick of shit they were already with that rumor. <laughs> at, le at least both of the folks here rolled pretty well. Do you, you all want to tell us about the rumors you're involved in? Please go right ahead. All right. So uh, the big rumor I think that really is interesting, Olive, is that um, along Ruby Tooth Bay, some researchers have found by going through some documents in the city's archives and the archives of the local university, they have found that there is this um, many, many correlating stories of a Spanish brothel ship from the 1500s that sank in the bay. And so because of this sort of recent discovery, all of these treasure hunters have been kind of coming, these amateur treasure hunters have been coming through, hanging out, going out to the site of the purported wreckage. And some of them just sort of disappear, which is kind of normal. You know, they're not, well, they don't ever come back to the city, but the ones that do come back will not make any indication whatsoever that they were treasure hunting on the ship and will not tell anybody about what they did or did not find, which as a dealer in potentially dangerous artifacts and also fake human bones uh, all has, has certainly grabbed all of the attention. And I would tell you Olive's individual involvement in it, but I don't exactly remember how we late left that. So. No, that is that is fine. So it's as I was mentioning, mechan from a mechanical perspective, our the players get to totally come up with those rumors by themselves, and then the next part of that is they all got to roll to see how in the shit with the rumor they are. Um, being powered by the apocalypse system, everything is either a fail, um, a success with consequences, or a success. Um, historian uh, olive got a partial success there and as such got a debt out of her involvement in this but also owes somebody for mortalis a debt um, so yes okay. it is there was a private investigator named bruin who came to you for help tracking down one of the member one of the missing members of the expedition uh, bruin owes you a debt for using your gifts to help him uh guess this person's password to their laptop uh, and you owe Bruin a debt for him sharing all of the the juicy documents regarding this shipwreck on the laptop with you. All right. And I just re-familiarized with myself with who Bruin is. Yes. I'm I'm looking forward to Bruin's appearance or first appearance in the <laughs> in the show. Mm. Uh, ah, Zan, do you Oh Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you want to tell us about Don's rumor? Uh, yeah, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, so, um, Don, Don heard a little thing, a little, a little, uh, little word on the grapevine that there was a new performer in town, you know, being in the entertainment business himself. Uh, Dom uh, prides himself on knowing uh, who's making what on the streets, you know? So, um, so... Dom does a little bit of digging, and it turns out that there's a uh, a living statue uh, that's moved to town, and he's he's not good, he's really good. He's unsettlingly, disturbingly, freakishly. You can't see him breathe. Good, um, and so uh, so this has been making quite a quite a few people nervous. Uh, Dom is is trying to play it real cool, but is not. Uh, not fully sure how the situation is gonna gonna play out in the long run. However, when I was rolling for this rumor, unlike I see, uh, I rolled a full success. So uh, things have gone pretty pretty much my way. Um, a winter court fay uh, has come to me uh, seeking protection because she feels as though it's following her, uh, a woman named Snoopy, and um, of course I I had the the knowledge and. Quite frankly, the muscle to lend to uh, to keep Snoopy safe. So um, I walked out of that with a debt, and or with a debt owed to me rather. Uh, and um, yeah, that's that's about how my rumor went. Perfect. Yeah. So that is that is the drama that we are <laughs> um, already involved in here in the city. 
Uh, yeah, and I think that's it. I think we are going to dive right in and see what all what our our two folks are up to at the time. Uh, last thing before we do that is one of the things that I picked up from a previous MC, which I just really enjoyed, and so y'all are going to have to deal with um in this show is uh i like i like doing a little poem before each session uh to kind of set the mood for how bad shit is gonna get in the city <laughs> so today's poem is where the tides ebb and flow by lord dunsany uh, the ebb came and i saw the dead eyes of the houses and the jealousy of other forgotten things that storm had not carried thence and some more centuries passed over the ebb and flow and over the loneliness of things forgotten and I lay there all the while in the careless grip of the mud, never wholly covered, yet never able to go free. And I longed for the great caress of the warm earth or the comfortable lap of the sea. So yeah, just just all good all good vibes there. Yeah, so who are we gonna start with first? <laughs> all right so it is it is sunday evening april 11th 2021 in ruby tooth bay shortly after sunrise or shortly after sunset because it's time time is a thing that makes sense what is don getting up to this this lovely sunday evening Well, once Dom unmutes, um, he is uh, going to be working uh, with a lovely company that uh, those who live in the area and those who follow the uh, the very uh, successful exploits of their their uh, their wrestling programs for the uh, Ruby Apocalypse Wrestling Rumble, uh, otherwise known as RAR or RAR Wrestling. Um, uh, so uh, this is a uh, the weekend after Easter. Easter was a, a big event. Um, uh, there was a uh, a kind of attempt at a crucifixion scene done in a uh, on an Easter Sunday match. Um, uh, and uh, there was some mild blasphemy uh, committed and attempted. And it's really um, the nation, the, the, not the nation, the um, the network is in a little bit of hot water. Like we were really expecting some warm water. It's a little bit, a little bit warmer than we were really expecting. Um, so we're kind of putting out some fires there. So we've had to, um, I am going to, my, my character being the ultimate heel, the um, the butcher, the bathed in blood, the the baptized in fire, the, 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 no, the sub names go on. Um, but he's going to be uh, hard at work at the uh, the Roar Studios doing some blocking for a fight that he is going to lose badly uh, this week. Uh, because, you know, heaven forbid the network see the bad guy win. Um, so he's uh, probably around uh, barking orders uh, to get the change the camera lights and things. And... Um, uh, probably uh, very much in character in kayfabe challenging out the uh the masculinity of the the person who is supposed to be um, assaulting him uh in the match yeah who is the person who's supposed to be assaulting you in the match are they are they a normal mortal person are they in in the community I, I think this is a character that I, I have a, a long-standing um, uh, rivalry with, uh, who's um, who who is the artist, um, and they are a um, they're they're a you know they they were kind of going through a transitional phase in the in the mid aughts and we're looking for something new and they their their character found this whole like artistic phase where they they were did like a music gig and then they did a, a painter gig and a sculptor gig and then it was the sculpted and so the the kind of the themes have played around a little bit but they've really built up a following and they actually you know have a pretty popular instagram i he would never tell anyone but that's of course not his fucking work um 
but yeah, uh, so the artist who um, who Dom uh, typically calls uh, Vincent Van Gogh, fuck yourself, um, because uh, in a, a match a few years ago, uh, Dom grabbed him by the ear um, uh, and a little bit too realistic and pulled and uh, ears don't come off. They uh, kind of pull the rest of the face with them. Uh, so we had to do some real explaining in the budget for that. Thankfully, he is a wolf. Uh, so he healed very quickly and um, we were able to throw in a whole like medical debt storyline. Um, so that works pretty well. Um, he and I have we have periods of being hot and cold. Um, it's not always uh, death threats. It is sometimes death threats. Um, at the moment, uh, I think it's just uh, fatigue from the well, the festivities of the last week and trying to make um, this show perfect. Yeah, good good luck. I didn't tell you any of that fucking NPC shit before we went live, buddy. Good luck. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, I did um I did rip their ear off like with my Coke can tab. Thank you, Quiet Deviant. Thank you for that. <laughs> I appreciate the thank you. and Sparrow too. I appreciate y'all letting letting me know about that. Um, what I was saying was making up NPCs is a bit on the fly is a big part of Urban Shadows. Comes up a lot. Um, there's usually some moves involved in that, and this one this was a little bit of a stretch for what you would normally do. Uh, but why don't why don't you go ahead and hit the streets with night for me, Zan? And we will we'll use that to determine, because it's you're going you're going to the artist and trying to get this uh, performance you know wrapped up, but we'll we'll just use this to see if they're effectively working with you or if they've got other shit that they're in the middle of. Yeah, yeah sure. So we'll see we'll see if the uh, they're going to try to switch out the breakaway two by four with a two by four two by four. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 Um. Yeah. Most certainly. So what exactly is a hit the streets? So, hit the streets is one of your circle moves, and you roll with the circle that you were hitting the streets for. So, you would roll this with your knight stat. Awesome. Well, I rolled a five and a six, which puts me at an 11, with a. Uh, my circle stat being. Where is this? Um, my circle is this with wild? Uh, with knight. Um, with knight. Under knight. Fantastic. So, that's uh, going to put me to. A big old 12 there, buddy. Yeah, and so you also get to mark knight um, as part of your advancement since you rolled with that circle. I just I just knocked that out for you in your character sheet. So it's once you... The way that um, advancement works in Urban Shadows is... There's, there's actually two ways to advance in it. One is corruption, which we have not d dived into yet, but is as fun as it sounds. Um... The other is your standard advances are for interacting with all four of the different circles throughout the city. So once you've interacted with a little bit of everybody, essentially you're reaching out, talking, working with more people in the town, and you are you get a boost from that. So yeah, on a complete success, um, they've, got what sh they've got what you need. So in this case, they are, they're good to work on this routine with you, and there are no, there's no complications you have to deal with. So it's just business. Yeah. Tell, tell me, how, how does this routine start? How do, what does this look like? Um, I think this routine uh, starts with... 
Yeah. So they would they would have done their their better month their good month good Monday better mo whatever Monday event last week, and so everybody is probably going to be expecting um um expecting this to like them to kind of blow it over and then just ignore it as as uh, they're they're typically one to do. Um, uh, so what they have done this week though is they have tried uh, to. Hmm. I think. I think what they did is, uh, they are giving my character uh, an an opening bit, um, and uh, I so I'm I'm doing I'm kind of practicing vamping and, and getting my huh, and uh, getting getting my my hype levels uh, where they're supposed to be, and um, then kind of we're doing a meta thing where it makes my, my devices fail. Um, and, uh, like the, obviously I have to play that I'm, I'm legitimately distressed and a uh, new microphones given and it you know, starts and then cuts out again. And, um, the lights start to flicker and then suddenly, uh, Vincent van Gogh, fuck yourself is in the ring with me. And, um, with his, uh, with his two by four that he's got. And, um, and the the silhouette that he 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 shows up with the light behind him it does slightly resemble a crucifix before he just fucking brains me with it um and so i think that the the way that that this looks is uh for it to be the best um i think we have to time it to a point that my character is just this far away from completely moving out of the way so that the audience thinks that it's, it's going to go right past, but then they still get that sweet sound of wood on skull. Um, and it doesn't actually knock me the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Would, would you say that is a technique that is just more in your wheelhouse now as, you know, a professional veteran wrestler at this point? Yeah. Yeah. We, we've got the timing down. Got it. Me and Vincent, this this whole you know ripping the ear off was like a two thousand. What was that? What was the awful year? Two thousand sixteen. It was a two thousand sixteen move. It was just you know there was a whole bit about R.I.P. Vincent Van Gogh, fuck yourself's ear. Um, Got it. So it's yeah. Essentially, you you don't think that it's something that you would require extensive use of your vampiric abilities for? Um, no, because this pretty old practice. hat at this point. Got it. Yeah, tonight's practice. We're 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 doing this. We're doing the slow mo to uh, to get it ready for for the performance in a couple of days. Got it. It's do y'all workshop your lines during this performance too, or is, is it pre scripted uh, at that point? It's it's framed ad lib. It is like here, like here's a phrase that needs to get said. Here's the tone. Here's the idea. As long as this key phrase is in there in some variant, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So. I I think like you described, the artist is coming at you with this um, mangled former crucifix, um, makes this swing, and then after this fake impact, or near impact, it's pretty fucking bold of you to show your face again here. You know, it's I'm feeling a bit peckish, and I like my meat bloody. Yeah. Do we, li do we like that? Do, we, do I need to... That, that feeling right? Yeah. Uh. Should I go with uh, raw, rare? Would that would that land uh, there? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I think maybe uh, if we if we went with more of a, um, uh, I'm gonna knock you out because kingdom has come. Maybe something like a maybe maybe something like that. Right. Uh, our kingdom's about to come. Or uh, um, uh, we could do a kind of a uh, uh, more more of a. Mm. Uh, when you're done, you'll be a little more uh, holy than righteous. That, that's always a, a pretty good one. That that sells pretty well, I think. Um, so uh, so let let me uh, start again. Uh, so uh, yes, that is what I will do. I will continue to destroy all of your holy icons and ad lib until there is. And then you look, 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 friend. And then you're supposed to fucking whack me. Mm -hmm. Would you that that that's the that's the lead oh, in. I, and then you that's the I know I know I'm fucking captivating. I'm perfectly aware, but I need you to focus on the violence and um, no, I was, uh, I was, not, not the head. face. 
not the right, not the face. Well, it's going to it's it's supposed to it's supposed to hit the yeah you, you know. Um, sorry, I'll talk a little bit louder then. Sorry about that. Uh, so I'll um, put make make sure it's to my good side so I can hear. Right, right. you're fucking fine. Uh, no, no, it's, it's a little a little contact, but you know, not as uh, you know. I, I want the audience to think that I, I got away, and that I didn't. Right. That's that's really the the give here. We want the we want the height, and we want the we want the low, and then the high. Right. Oh shit! The fucker's still fucking alive. Yes, he's dead. Yeah, so it's, that's what we want. Yeah. Once, once we, once the crucifix breaks away to more of a point, just kind of coming at you with that towards the end. It's a, uh, so yeah. Like, we should, we should have, a, not, we should back out around that time. Yes, um, we're, we're not. Don't think you're coming back in three days, type thing. There. No, 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 no. It's, it's gonna be, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop it or something. It'll go in my leg. I'll, we'll, we'll do me like a little two week recovery tour. It'll be fine. Um, I'll do. I've, I've got some uh, some podcast or some other fucking media bullshit that I'm supposed to be doing. Anyways, it's fine. I have a few personal projects. I I need to look after the uh, the feral fights a little bit too. Those are uh, supposed to be kicking off pretty soon. Your uh, your nephew still coming? Yeah, I mean, if he told you he's coming, yeah. As far as I know, he's okay. Good. I just word. wanted to make sure. Right. Right. Why he's getting it? He getting in any trouble? No, 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 he's a love. He's an absolute delight. Um, you know, I just, it'd be nice to have an EMT around. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that, what can I say, that definitely comes in handy for the for the family there. Um, are we, it, we calling it a break right now, or? Hey, yeah, sure, let's, let's do, um, let's do one more, and then we'll, um, we'll, we'll, uh, I don't know, you want to go do some coke? I mean, okay, it's fine. You can say no, that's fine. You're fucking holier than a piece of shit. Um, you're not even in fucking character right now. What the fuck? I'm fine. Well, let's do it. We'll fucking do it. It's cool. Let's do it. Uh, okay, ready. <clears throat> am, I, am, I, uh, am I going? Well, you go, go in the moment right. <laughs> he waits a second, then he takes a big swing. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think just out of your, do you, when you're, when you're training like this, um, your phone, is that, is that, is that ringside or is that in the locker somewhere? Um, gonna be honest with you. I don't think the costume has pockets. No, no. I assumed, so... it, I assumed it wasn't on your person. No, no, definitely. Um, I, I would <laughs> imagine. Probably a good way to go through phones. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, practice how you perform. It's in the locker room. Okay. Yeah, well, let's not worry about that. Uh... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, I think you and you and the artist uh, wrap up your little, your your sparring match, and then what, what else is on the docket? Uh, well, first, I need to think of a cute uh, acronym for, for Vincent Banker. Fuck yourself. Um, uh... Because I mean, the artist, though. Um, uh, I think after that, um, I would probably be heading down to the shallow gene pool. Um, kind of my my go to. This is uh, this is one of the places we we are. You know, despite all of our our various bullshittery, we are still in the south, and so it's not necessarily always easy to find a drink in the uh, on a Sunday night in the south. Uh, so I am. Um, uh, I think ordering the um, the iced tea. Got it. So uh, you are. Is... <laughs> yeah, this is this is a this is a grunge punk like DIY shithole bar, um, and everybody who comes there like expects for the glass. Like, if you don't ask for one of their secret drinks on a Sunday, you expect your drink to have room for you to add your own whiskey. Now it's um I think on your way there you do notice that you've got a text from Snoopy. Okay. Um Is your um are your people still around? I I didn't see them but I feel like they're outside my apartment. Uh Yeah, yeah, for sure. What um what uh what what what, what neighborhood are you in? Where does Snoopy live? I think Snoopy probably lives 
she's probably on the side of town, uh, close to the, the shallow pool, actually. She's, she'd be on a route for you. You're muted, by the way. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. I was mostly just rambling to myself, but that is my turf. Um, so that is, uh, that's a no-no. Um, so I'm going to uh, probably, uh, I don't know, I mean, are there people around on the streets? Um, you don't, are, you, are you heading towards her apartment? I'm heading, I, well, I was heading towards the gene yeah. pool. Um, but, uh, I, I didn't know, um, if, how, like, how directly, like, if I was, am I taking service streets? Am I driving? Like, what's going on? Um, let me see. Let me, ch let me check our handy map here. Um, I don't, are, are you, are you driving or are you walking? Uh, I mean, if there's, there, there is a, a benefit to being able to be seen, um, and being able to make eye contact explicitly. Um, it's always nice to have a meal. So uh, I think if it's short enough, he would probably uh, be be walking. Yeah, it's uh, Rar and the Shallow Pool are pretty close. Um, yeah, and it's because I think Rar is kind of like right on the border, or it's it's pretty close to like Wild Night border. Yeah, it's Snoopy it, probably it lives is... on the other side of that, so it's it's a little yeah, bit out of your way to get to her. Um, so you could it's it's for somebody of. A vampire speed too. You can get around town pretty damn pretty damn fast on your feet. Um, mm -hmm. As for your other question, city, it's the side streets are pretty empty right now in the neighbor in the residential neighborhoods, but along the shorefront, it's it's still pretty busy. Okay, There's still a good um, number of people out and about. So, uh, wearing uh, one of my own merch shirts um, because. Uh, of course I am. Um, I am uh, going to kind of, I guess I'll, I'll have like a, a 40 of some kind. I'll just like kind of crack it on something and uh, a little dig into the palm a little bit and look at somebody and raise the hand up and take a drink from the from the broken glass. I'm really trying to get a rise out of folks. Um, just and then the passerbys on the street. <laughs> Just yeah, really once they, and once they do that, then just wave with the other hand and, and continue on, because uh, that's going to be a great meal the next time I see them, because I'm going to live in that person's brain until they see me again. Sure. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and, and so um, I will definitely be, I'll tell, uh, I'll tell Snoopy to, like, meet me at someplace on the way mm -hmm. so that um it's not just her waiting um and i'll give her a um uh, a little code that we use it's a uh, whistling um the sun will come out tomorrow um uh, and so some of my folks that are around in the area like are aware that someone whistling that song knows the reason they're whistling that song and then like if that cuts off abruptly to please be aware okay. that's the thing that needs to be investigated if that song cuts out nice got it yeah it's while you are while you're making your way over towards this meetup with snoopy why don't we why don't we cut over to olive and see what see what she's getting into tonight and actually you as as our oracle you've got a start of session move for us I do. Yes. And I know what that is a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really know what that is. Like, I, a lot. Did I say a that lot. already? I so much. A lot. Um, so much that I actually, I'm going to test you, Patrick. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to make sure you know what my start of session move is. Yeah. So it's, you've got, you've got a cool little trick called foretellings. Which is Great. at the start of the game, you get to you get to give us a roll with spirit, and on a hit, you get to pick from some options um, on this oh. on this handy list that we'll go to. Um, Great, and I will tell you about someone's future that you see. Fabulous. Um, if it's a seven to nine on a ten plus, you get to tell me whose future you see, and on a miss, let's not miss and find out. I got a ten. Ten, perfect. 
Yeah, so not only do you get to pick one of the options from this list, which I will happily read, but you get to tell us who's ca what character your vision is about that you're going to receive. Um, you can mm. choose that a dangerous threat is closing in on someone. I will tell you what it, why this threat stalks them. Uh, that somebody's ally is plotting to betray them. Um, I will tell you when the hammer will fall. Or that a tragedy lurks in the shadows for someone. And I will tell you how they can avoid it. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. And that is about our player characters. It could be about anybody. Hmm. It could be about any of the NPCs that we've set up in the city, um, or a player character. Player character. So, I think that so I think that Olive is always deeply concerned for uh, her girl Casey. Right. Casey, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I have it right. That I, is. I will say. Casey being one of our other PCs who's not here this week, you get to roll this every week. Oh, okay. So, so I, okay. It, so it's we totally can make one about Casey, but it's not something we will interact with until okay, they're that, here. Then I'll do it next week. So I think that for Olive, um, her benefactor Preston mm -hmm. has been very generous lately in his um retainer that he sort of maintains for her services um and she not necessarily feels like guilty because preston's involvement is his own making and that's his problem like he decided that as a mortal he thought that he could consort with the ways of demons and negotiate a faustian bargain and it's his problem that it hasn't worked out in his favor he should have read the end of the play in 12th grade english class um but she's concerned that, like, just sort of keeping tabs on him. Mm -hmm. Is there something that he knows about his bargain that he's not telling her? And that's why he has increased his interest in making sure that she's available to him mm -hmm. to suss out um, the uh, potential... Uh, the the tightening demonic stranglehold on his mortal soul. Mm -hmm. So I think that she would be sort of looking in, and I imagine she does this quite often from time to time, like without him being in front of her, she sort of just sort of wants to sort of dip her finger in the old spectral pool and see what mm -hmm. what way the current is flowing. And I was going to say, for, for your premonitions like this, are these something that... I, I know we've talked a little bit about this, but are they ever something that just hits you without you acting on something? Or what, what is your procedure for kind of getting this? So Olive started having her premonitions very young. Uh, she was actually going into her first grade classroom when she had her first premonition. So while if things are like particularly upsetting to her, she it can like strong emotions can absolutely trigger her powers um but she has luckily had a long time to learn to sort of slip into the space and slip out um so i think this is she's this has sort of been bothering her i think all day she's you know closing up the shop her like um busy season seasonal helper is sort of making stuff happen and so I think she goes back to kind of do the reports for the night and mm -hmm. takes this moment before finishing her closing routine before going out to have some fun of her own. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's going to be, a, your vision will be about Preston. Do you know which of those three types of visions you would like? Uh, between uh, a dangerous threat's closing in on them, one of their I allies is plotting their betrayal, or there's a tragedy lurking. I would say the first one. Dangerous threat is closing in. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Do you have any, just in terms of your, your stock at the store, do you have anything that would, 
whether it's real or not would pass itself off as like sacrificial weaponry any any you know ritual weapons anything like that oh yeah that seems I mean, like a touristy like thing a, this is like a tourist trap like tchotchke boogity boogity shop and like the real shits in like the back room and the real real shit is either stored off site or it's in the basement um and only people who know exactly what they're coming in for see that but she totally has like a mall ninja section mm -hmm. she's got, like the little claw weaponry thing oh yeah she's got all that stuff oh yeah it's like a 90s hot topic situation happening I think it's probably as you're walking through that section of your shop that you're hit with a vision about Preston. Um, you see not one, but multiple just narrow daggers, almost like ice picks or stilettos, um, just stabbing into his side um, from more than one source. So you're seeing him get attacked, and it's I will tell you why this threat stalks them. Something needs Preston's blood for a ritual. You know, okay. it's possible because it's you've run into issues where Preston actually has some defenses against your site specifically. You're yeah. not sure if it's be, if it's these outside um, whoever this outside faction is that you're getting a read on is the reason that you're able to see this. Mm -hmm. But someone, someone, someone needs a part of him to make some ritual work. They are, they yeah. are coming to take it, whether he wants to donate it or not. Okay. So, I imagine Olive, um, this sort of, as she's walking through, I think that she has come to terms a lot. Like, her powers are not really a surprise to her. And the idea that there are certain things that will trigger these mental connections, she kind of, um, for her, it's a lot like someone who has like a photographic memory. Like she can hear something and it's just, it's all of a sudden it's just there um, in her mind. And so she has this image of him being stabbed and his blood being collected, like um, almost like those, like imagine like those maple tree tapper things, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I know what you mean. Uh, and I think she sort of takes a second. She looks at her stock to see if she, it's like, it's not anything from here, is it? Uh, it doesn't really look like it. These are all kind of like, you know, letter openers. This was a little bit more like, you know, Mexico City, uh, Leon Trotsky situation. So no. Um, and I think she um, helps. She She sort of goes about her business, but takes a mental note that, she has some questions for Preston. So either somebody else, either she has tapped into somebody else or somebody else or Preston has, wants her is, is either not paying attention enough and that she has sort of slipped in or somebody else knows what her connection to Preston and wants her to know that this is happening. Um, and she's not really quite sure what that is, but given his increased insistence at her availability, she's wondering if it's actually that he is distracted and he is not at, does not have his defenses against her sight at the ready, which is concerning. I mean, you know, you gotta keep the yeah. gravy train alive as long as possible. She's pretty sure she's not in the will. Um, <laughs> so um yeah i think she's gonna go back and um she goes back to her office and she takes out a like really really nice iphone that um he insisted she have because he has find my iphone but she like leaves it in her shop because she's kind of like a little bit of this mm -hmm. um it's it's become a landline at this point yeah i mean i i think like um i feel like there's been tension between them of him i, I think a theme of their relationship it, and it's a theme of like his whole issue of selling his soul is 
this attempt to control things that are not his to control. Mm -hmm. And one of their, I think, negotiations is that, like, you need me, buddy, a hell of a lot more than I need you. And you need to understand, like, which side of the ledger book this relationship is deficient in. And, like, this is a lovely gift. But, like, you know, you shouldn't have sold your soul at a crossroads to become a world renowned televangelist if you didn't want you know to eventually have to pay up mm -hmm. so she does take it out um she does leave it charged and she fires off a uh text message which is i imagine they have code because you know mm -hmm. uh he still has to keep up he has to keep up the um uh facade that he is a poster boy for the moral majority mm -hmm. um and she fires off a text that's basically like, you know, if you're making any trips to uh, the Gulf Coast, coast of Florida, don't forget about your friends at RTB. And she kind of pops it back in her desk. Now, it's a fun question. Do you know what he has you saved as under his phone? Um, <laughs> so I... Appearances? I imagine he probably has her saved as like I, I imagine his his cover is that he books his wife. So he is a um for, for those of you at home, so Preston Carver is a um an incredibly, incredibly famous um uh and well known and very wealthy televangelist you know, the head of a nonprofit organization. Um, and he, uh, in order to sort of get this incredible sway over people, uh, about eight years ago, sold his soul to Crossroads to a demon and has over the last like couple of years become keenly aware of the fact that that is a 10 year deal and that his 10 years are almost up. So he has um, sort of put Olive on retainer to kind of keep track of the goings on beyond the veil that Preston really doesn't have any access to and her um, as he tries to kind of weasel his way out of his bargain. So I imagine that his cover is that he, and also to cover up for his like numerous actual affairs because he's a grade A slime ball, mm -hmm. um, looks his wife stays at a very, very exclusive resort um like a little bit away, like I would imagine in like Miami. Uh, and he goes to conferences and that's when he comes up to the day to um, check in with Olive and see if there's any progress being made on him getting out of his deal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, he's saved as a man's name, first of all, but also as some sort of like, hotel consultant or travel agent or something like that mm -hmm. who like sends him deals of like special things and really he's like paying out the nose mm -hmm. uh not only for not only for um olive but also to basically keep up the uh basically keep up the appearances of this whole charade and I think like, like Olive lives very nicely, but she's also squirreled a lot of it away mm -hmm. because she's smart enough to know like, unless the powers that be are feeling particularly generous, he doesn't really have a shot no. of getting out of this. So. And um, regard regardless to it's he's got however many years left in his contract, and then it either it either goes well for him, in which case he doesn't need you anymore, or. It doesn't, and then he's gone, and also no longer paying you. So that makes sense. Right. right. But, like, in the meantime, she has built a very nice, kind of unassuming life for herself, but a life that's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And every, it's, like, subtle. Like, she wears, like, the typical sort of, like, flow, flowy maxi dresses of a beach, but if you look at them, it's, like, they're, like, the Yves Saint Laurent resort collection. It's not, like, beach store. It's, like the Diane von Furstenberg, like, you know, like line, it's not, you know, her, her 
mirrored sunglasses that she wears to piss off Don so that he can't look at her are like Tom Ford. You know what I mean? It's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like she lives like she kind of blends in pretty well. But if you look closely enough, you realize that there's got to be some some bankroll happening in the background. Nice. Yeah. So you sent him essentially j- only text you met the text essentially said like let me don't forget about me if you're in town essentially yeah so, mm-hmm. uh, or, or t- talk to me i think i have a good deal for you Got i it. have some questions before i uh book your next vacation mm-hmm. no I love and she that. Kind of leaves the phone out on her desk while she does whatever she has to do to close up her computer systems as her assistant sends the latest crowd of drunken frat bros out the door I think you actually get a pretty, pretty quick text back, uh, saying, "I'm, as you know, I'm never, I never let myself get too far from the bay." Um, uh, actually, en route for a trip now. Work against the devil is never done. I think that like. I imagine as the camera sort of pans up from the phone, right, in the movie that this is, you see Olive roll her eyes and look, like, a little nauseous. Like, she's like, oh, jeez, like... And she... She, um... Just, um... Texts back a picture of an exclusive, like, spa resort, but it's with the shop's hours. Like, her shop hours. I think you get a text back uh, saying I'm actually en route now. Don't know that I'll make it quite in time for that, but um, perhaps you could get us a reservation for some food or drinks and we can discuss this further. She sort of uh, I think shrugs and sends back um let me look at the map. I have to remember the name of the place. I spent so much time and energy knowing all of my starting moves that I forgot the names of the locations. It's fine. We it could be a it does not have to be a place we made either. You can make up a place. So I think the thing is, is that she sort of is torn on this because part of her wants him to go to like the fucking dive bar because it's gonna make him miserable. Mm-hmm. And she needs to like remind him of his uh she needs to sort of as every once in a while she needs just asserts agency in ways like not to actually put him in any level of real danger because like he's already done that himself but it's just to sort of remind him subtly that like you know this is a this is a mutually beneficial transactional relationship Mm -hmm. but she also really wants good um good seafood right it's um, it's it's a power yeah, play so versus a power food. play versus she treat yourself on, moment right like either way it's on his dime so i think she's going to open up open table and um she's actually going to book a table at um wild is is green yeah uh mortalis is green on our little map uh wild is orange perfect mortalis is green so if we go down to our map uh, we see the little part. You see I'm pinging right here? Yep, I see that. So right there is um, the um, uh, Wavecrest Cove uh, restaurant. It is actually like, it is like a very small uh, kind of exclusive supper club for like the real foodies in the area. So it's like the parents who like are are compelled to like drop their kid off at spring break but like want to go have their own food or you know like the guy who hooks up with a girl but like really wants to impress her on their week away Mm -hmm. that's where they'll go so she books them a table there um because it's later on there actually is one and she sets the reservation for like 9 30 which i imagine is in about an hour Mm -hmm. or so And she texts him the open table confirmation. Yeah, perfect. Um, Do you have any other 
you, you just get a thumbs up emoji back. Um, so she like sends Ashley her um. Uh, Ashley is her her help. She's a local college student, um, who may or may not also be an oracle. She has some sort of light abilities. Like I know it's not a thing, but like mm -hmm. they're just like they're not really trained. Um, and so Olive has kind of adopted her a little bit, not really, but her boyfriend um, comes to get her. So she sees her safely off and she locks up the shop and um, goes upstairs to change. And as she does, she takes out of, she sort of uh, locks up everything and puts everything in the safe and whatnot. And she takes out of the safe a um, small box of, and the box, if it, 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 it's shut and it, it's locked, there's no key or anything. Uh, she takes it out of the safe and um, brings it upstairs with her when she goes to change and locks everything back up. Yeah. Um, what do you, what is, what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? So the box is um, a particularly like difficult object. So there is the, the rumor I spoke of earlier, people have been finding things. Um, someone has brought this box in they can't open it but um they picked it up along along the coastline in like a relatively swampy area and it's quite old and uh they brought it to olive and they didn't really say anything they wouldn't say anything about it they wouldn't let her like shake hands or anything and that's she's very she's tactile with her use of her powers it's largely tactile um, so she's often seen wearing gloves because it just gets to be too much. Um, so she uh, has sort of been puzzling over this. So she takes it with her. She kind of takes it from spot to spot. Mm -hmm. um, and she's kind of holding on to it and trying to figure out how to open it and see what's in there. Yeah, I think, I think as you're like finding its right uh, arrangement for the evening, in your apartment tonight yeah i think you hear i think you hear the does your stop have a bell when it opens um it's locked i know but um there is a uh there is a bell but there's also like a sort of silent alarm okay that rings on her phone like her actual phone not her preston phone yeah you hear the bell go off Oh boy. Great. Do I hear like footsteps, just the bell? You hear the bell initially and then nothing else for it feels like maybe 15, 20 seconds. Okay. And then you hear so, the bell ring twice more. Okay, so um Olive is going to pop open her actual phone and log into her, like, cameras mm -hmm. for the shop. Because, like, yeah, like, supernatural stuff, but it's also, like, there's drunk humans. So, like, drunk, she needs also, like, protection against drunk dumbasses. Yeah. So, what, when she has a camera right by the register um, and kind of in the corners where some of the stuff is and also in the back office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, why don't you go ahead and put a face to a name with Wild for me? Oh, I love that. So, uh, for for folks watching, put a name to a face or put a face to a name is the first time that the characters interact with any NPC in the game, we make this role to essentially determine whether there's any relationship already between them, whether they owe each other any debts already, or whether they've never met before. Oh, that was a seven. That's not bad. So on a, so on a on a success, um, you just you know what most people know about them. Um, on a ten plus, um, if we've gotten that, you've dealt with them before, and you can either get useful information or something something useful about them, or they can owe you a debt. And on a miss, either you don't know them or you owe them, and I get to choose that one. Oh, but, good. Um, yeah. So on a seven to nine. 
you know what most people know about them. So you would recognize this. There is a a woman standing in your store. Um, black leather jacket. She's in her maybe her forties, fifties, with a very, just very. I don't know how to describe it besides Karen-like hair, um, and just looking directly into the camera over the cashier, just waving. As you see the, as you hear the bell going off several more times, but see that no one is by the door. And okay. You would recognize that this is Triveria Submerso. She is a tainted in town, so she is more more demon friends for you. Oh, yes. And I think she, I think you see her again looking into the camera, and you just see her um, wink at you, and the other eye coming back. You see normal human eye and the one that she winked is just on fire when she opens it again yeah so and i think she goes olive if, if, it's, if it's okay with you oh, do you mind if we if we go to break right there and then come right back for that oh sure whatever you want to do man it's your yeah. channel yeah we're gonna, we're gonna take just a quick five ten minute break uh to refresh on water get up and stretch recommend everybody else do that too and then we will we will dive right back into our, our vampire demon oracle action here yeah. Yeah, so we'll be right back with y'all. Hey, we're back. It's still it's still urban shadowy. It's we are still in a city and it is still dark out, so it is still urban shadows time. Um, yeah, so at, just before we went to break, um, Olive was, had, had already closed up her shop, um, and now has, she has a, she has a demon-related patron, uh, uh, not a demon patron, um, someone with a demon patron is now patronizing her store. Oh. <laughs> one, of, one of our tainted NPCs, Truveria, has shown up, and looks, looks you know, is maybe waiting to do business downstairs. Uh, so Olive, I think, is just gonna, um, she's just gonna go downstairs. Like, if, I mean, it, it's not like Trevere, it's not like she's not gonna find out where Olive is. Like, she she knows. Like, it doesn't matter. So, um, she sort of, um, kind of makes, like, almost a huff of it. Like, she kind of gets down, goes back down, comes out through the office and kind of leans against the doorway and says sign with ours is outside well it's so nice to meet you too i just assumed those were the hours for regular people depends on what you're looking for i suppose what do people typically come to you looking for well, um, shitty pictures for their Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, things to upset their parents, Good uh, overpriced, um, well, I mean, mall ninja memorabilia, really? It's a mm -hmm. lot of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, tequila dulls the senses and, and engages one in questionable taste. And so it's the this this Taurus bullshit. This keeps the roof over your head. I think she she sort of smiles like she like like I feel like this is a dance that these two people are doing where they know that they're doing a dance. Mm -hmm. She sort of smiles, her quirks a little bit, like for the most part. Yeah, that's what I thought. <sighs> Beach real estate comes at a premium. Mm -hmm. Now, is there something specific I can help you with? Well, I mean, I was under the impression that there was a pretty talented seer here, but maybe I was wrong. I'm not really one to, uh, not one to brag too much, but... If someone has given you that indication, I certainly could at least 
do you the courtesy of trying it out? What is it that you have any uh, desire to see? Friend? Is that how it works? Do I have to... How much information do I need to give you beforehand? I've just well, seen a I'll... lot of fakes before. Well, I've I'll heard tell such you. promising yeah. things about you. I'll put it to you this way, right? Think of your aura like a diary. All the things about you are written down in it. You've been keeping it your whole life. Now, are you going to just hand me that book and let me look through whatever catches my eye? Or are you going to tell me the specific chapter or section or year that I should limit my focus? See, that's the tricky thing. I don't give a shit about anything I would have put in my diary so far. I want to know about things I need to look out for. And I think she sort of looks like kind of excited because normally people are looking for like things that they have upset in the now and uh she kind of looks around is there anybody else in the shop that she can see um not that you can see um let me let me just take a peek at some of your oracle bullshit and see if there's it's a lot of bullshit yeah Yeah, sorry, I was, I was looking at your let it out stuff. Yeah, you don't get the sense that there's anybody else here. Okay. And she kind of, I think, smiles at Triv in a way, that, like in a genuine smile, like this is something that's like, like interesting to her. And she indicates like to come back and she says, why don't you follow me? Um, and if you could ask your friends to stay outside, this may not be something that uh, is for public consumption. Oh, I didn't bring any friends. She kind of smirks and she says, my apologies. And she leads Triv to... So there's the office and then there's what looks like a storage room and but that breaks into two areas and one of them is like a storage room with all of the like touristy stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other door is a door downstairs. And um, it's like a traditional sort of it looks like a seance room, but like it's real stuff like the, the, the drawings, the chalk is like real symbols. It's not just movie stuff. And she has like um, like a sort of banquette seating with with cushions. And she sort of indicates that that's where Triv should sit. Um, and she takes a ch there's a chair sort of kitty corner because um, she has to uh, feel she has it's it's tactile but she wants anyone to be comfortable because the experience can be quite jarring. Um, so she's you know, so tells Triv to sit and says like um, now I'm not sure exactly your tolerance for physical discomfort I admit. Uh, normally, when your kind and I have crossed paths, uh, it has not been to attain these particular services. But I will tell you, if you have not had a, and she pauses, reading, uh, at times the experience can be quite physically uncomfortable. So I do like to provide cushioning. <laughs> I appreciate the warning. I can... I'm not as delicate as I look, but I appreciate I'm, it. I mean, one of your eyes is on fire, so I imagine you can absolutely handle yourself, but, you know, it's it's just part of the spiel. Right. And... Um, I feel like I should probably mention, if you're going to be reading my aura, that I imagine that could be a bit overwhelming as well, if you've not dealt with many of my kind. I appreciate it. Uh, and she kind of sits down and says, now, she sort of takes the seat and, like, kind of settles herself in. 
and says, now, and she just takes off her gloves, and you see that her hands are, like, in impeccable condition. Like, her manicure is, like, like, perfect. Like, her hands are very, like, soft and lotioned, and, like, the skin is in very good condition. She keeps them covered because her, her, um, powers are done through tactile and she says now i'll tell you it's a lot like opening a window nothing comes in some some people have a unique ability to block or evade my detection i'm going to try my best but i just want you to understand that just because i can't see anything does not mean that something isn't out there mm mm-hmm. It's a fair warning. Um, is Trivium, so Trivium has the jacket. Does she have any other, like, physical items? Like, any jewelry or anything on? Oh, um, I think she's probably got some gaudy-ass jewelry on, if I had to Kay. guess. Probably earrings and a necklace, at least. Okay, so, um... I think, like, Olive is is... Like, be she's. I, I think all like Trivium would definitely get the sense that Olive is not bullshitting her. She's actually being this. Like, this is what she does because it's not particularly flashy, or like it's not very boogity boogity. Like, it's almost as if, um, it's almost as if Olive is like um, examining her, mm-hmm. like you would at like you half expect her to like look in her eyes with a little shiny light thing, right? Like she's just being very uh methodical and i think she picks up like touches the lapel of her jacket and kind of squeezes it to see how it feels she picks up the necklace maybe like a a a bit of her hair um and then sort of looks like kind of hems and haws a bit and then just says i think we'll just skip the formalities and she takes both of Trivia's hands in hers. And is that rolling with psychometry? So I was looking at yeah. your stuff, and it's psychometry. It's, I think there's a couple ways we could do it. Okay. Um, so psychometry, you've got, that's with an interesting object, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so it's we could do it maybe with one of the objects on her. It would probably give you more specific information about the object itself instead of trivia. Yeah. Um, alternatively, um, under let it out, um, there's some things that might apply there. Uh, there's like look into the recent past or coming future of a place or object nearby, which again isn't a person, but you could twist the strands of fate to help or hinder an NPC in your presence. We could play that as you seeing what's coming for her, and then you could decide All right. what you want to share with her okay we, that's we, fair. Like, you don't have to decide to help or hinder i think until you see what's happening yeah i think that's fair i think i'll do um the let it out and it's one other thing i'll mention not that you need to have done it at any point but don't forget when you're interacting with npcs that you've also got your figure someone out move too which that is um that's a role with mind and you get to ask some questions about like what you think you've gleaned from them during the conversation Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to do that before I go into... So I feel like while that's kind of what she's doing when she's, like... She's kind of not really diving in, but, like, picking up the feel of the objects Mm -hmm. on Trivia's body. Like, was this jacket recently acquired by some from someone who should be alive and wearing it? Like, (laughs) that type of a thing. So I want to figure someone out. And that is plus... Something? Uh, Figure someone out is a mind roll. So that is oh, okay. your mind so stat. That's a nine. Nine. So on a, on a seven to nine, um, on a hit, you get to ask two questions from this list, which I'll happily read. On a seven to nine, they get to ask one of you as well. Um, so these are all okay. questions that are essentially, um, you know, above the table. So it's you don't have to answer them in character. Um, and I don't have to answer as trivia. It's you and I essentially get to ask each other, and we know that the information will be true. Um, so okay. You don't have to worry about, you know, whether I'm like lying or stretching the truth here. You can trust all the information. Okay. Um, awesome. So questions on this list are who's pulling your character's strings. Okay. What's your character's beef with, and then insert whoever here. 
what's your character hoping to get from insert whatever here what does your character worry is going to happen how can i get your character to do whatever you want in that blank uh and then how could i put your character in my debt all right so the first okay so i just pick the two and then you pick one yep and it's you you can hold one of, you can hold them if you want to like as a conversation is going on and you if you like if you only know you want to ask one at the beginning you can hold on to it through the scene but if you've got two you know you want to ask you could do them right now i do so the first thing i want to know and i imagine like as she's she's probably talking to her while she's like touching stuff and I imagine that, like, I don't think Olive, like, Olive doesn't really care what Trivia thinks of this whole thing. Trivia wouldn't be there if she didn't need her. Like, it's pretty ballsy to, like, just show up at, like, the local Oracle's haunt. Like, that's a pretty gutsy move. You do that if you really need to. Um, you know, she's not, Olive's a kind of, you know, she's, like, Trivia is not the only person that like no. Olive knows and could talk to. So um so I think she's sort of uh is like touching her like the stuff that's on her, um, getting a feel for it and kind of warming up and is wondering um like what it is like I'm I'm not I'm not asking to know like your intimate deep business, but I have to have some idea what it is that you want to get out of this because like sometimes I mean it like I said it's like a window like I could let in a gentle spring breeze or I could let in a hurricane and I need to be able to sort out exactly what it is that you want. I mean, it's not like somebody's going to come in and tap me on the shoulder and read it to me nicely. Mm -hmm. Not a singing telegram. No, let's... There are... I get the feeling, or... I've received word. There's a lot of... There's some potential shakeups coming in the demon... The demon hierarchy of the city soon. I am just trying to stay afloat. And so I need to know if my best options for staying alive through whatever the coming conflict are. All right. Fair. Um, and so above the table, I want to know how I can put her in my debt. She will, one, if, like, for an accurate reading, she's going to owe you a debt for that. Great. So um, I think, like, like, Olive's not a monster, right? Like, Olive has, like, her level of self-interest, but she's, like, it does, like, it's not going to do anything for me to like, I don't want to get involved in this bullshit. I'm already going to be involved in the bullshit with demons, like in about, you know, 19 months. So like, that's fine. So she's just, she doesn't have a dog in this fight other than it being more than okay with her to have a demon like in her Rolodex. So I think she's definitely going to do the let it out move and plans on being as honest with trivia as the vision allows her to be. All right. Yeah, so it's for Let It Out. That is a roll with spirit. Okay. All right, advanced dice roller. Oh, oh that's an 11. Yep, yeah, so on a... Ooh, what, is a 11. what does a full success get you? Um, on a... For Let It Out, when you let out the power within you, roll with spirit. On a hit, you mark corruption and activate one of the four abilities from your playbook. Um, the MC will tell you how the effect is costly, limited, or unstable. Or, on a 10+, plus, you can choose to ignore the, cor the corruption or the complications, and it's your choice. So it's, you are, either the, either the vision that you get is going to be limited in some way, or you'll take a corruption for doing this. So oh, I already marked the corruption. Okay. That, that, I look, are you kidding me? Those corruption. Oh yeah, corruption is fun. Way. I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. I'm marking a corruption. Love it. So uh, I think that means like the vision is just sort of un. It uh, just is what it is, right? Yep. There's there's no. It is it is not going to be like obscured or limited whatsoever. Okay. Great. What do I see? So I guess what describe. Hmm. 
so it's you said this is pretty much all tactile, right? So she takes her hands and um I don't know like what demon's like sense of touch is, but her she takes her hands and as um for for Molov's perspective, it's kind of like she is submerging herself into a pool and sort of like almost like dipping into the like liquid of reality if that makes any sense like you've seen those like pictures how they um uh model the fabric of space time and it's like it, it's like the grid and then they make the mat more objects that are massive like it like you put a bowling ball on a tablecloth mm-hmm. right like, so it's almost like Olive has sort of sunk into, like, for her, it feels like she's just sort of is now part of the flowing energies of, like, the world. And I imagine for the people that are sort of being read, her grip becomes not hard as in painful, but it's almost like your hands are being held by living stone. Mm-hmm. Like, she's not crushing your bones. She's not exerting pressure, but, like you're not getting away unless you're losing a limb. Mm -hmm. And so when she is like consciously doing a reading, her eyes are milky white, a hundred percent, like entirely over opaque white. And, um, she just has this very like serene kind of expression on her face as she does this. And, um, I imagine it's probably a little bit unsettling, probably not for a demon, but like for anyone else, it's a little like, cause it's clear that like, this is not, she can't fake this. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and when she, um, sees the vision, it's kind of like, she's walking through like almost like a 3d watercolor painting of something where like, images kind of blend into one another and they slowly crystallize depending on the quality of the reading that she's going to get so like if they're if it's not going to be very good it's sort of as like blobs that are difficult but like as like this was like a really this is a very strong reading so like as she sort of like drips into it it's like the image is 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 just becoming sharper and sharper and sharper and more clear until it's almost as if she's like in this future standing there watching it unfold yeah i think as you kind of because you just from how you described it i almost pictured like she kind of almost like drips through like this this water membrane like the surface mm-hmm. of the water and it's you don't she don't you don't take any harm from this but you feel like a warmth explode in your hand in that stone like grip that you have you feel it suddenly become like hotter and sharper in your skin mm-hmm. it's you see trivia for what her other form in this realm. You see just this humanoid silhouette that is just all dark spikes and flame covering the entire body. Yeah. Um, and as she, you kind of, in this membrane, you kind of stand up and she's just seated in place um, with a, a leash and a collar leading out onto what you what you might represent as you know a map of the area a map of the bay mm-hmm. yeah um, you see that just goes off to some you know a sh- some shadowy figure off in the distance um that is almost being drowned out by on two sides of the city you see a giant just like beam of light um erupting from the ground and opposite it just this coiling mass of shadows that um, kind of rotates around what appears to be a dark throne um, with just it's almost like some giant gelatinous mass just plopped on top of it um, and so you've got these two things at the end you see um, whatever shadowy figure in the middle as you just shadow and light kind of erupts from those two points at the side kind of catching everything in the middle um and you see whatever figure trivia is attached to just starts sinking into the ground and grasping and grasping until it's gone and you just see her getting pulled by this leash 
just dragged underground with it. And I'm assuming underground is not like a happy magic fun time. You don't see. It's almost like um, <laughs> if you've ever seen the old Simpsons Treehouse of Horror specials. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. When Homer's in like the 3D realm and like the cone just creates a hole. It's just a column straight down. Um, okay. With but no, but it's not like yay! I'm escaping the suffering. No, it's, no, it's, it's like, oh no. You, there's definite attempts to avoid being dragged into this hole from all parties. <laughs> Okay. Um, and it's, I think, as you're seeing her disappear over the side, you you see just almost like a volley of arrows coming from outside of the city. Some new, th- some new party that's entered and just rains over all of the combatants that you've noted so far. And as that's striking into the ground, you come out. Okay. So recap in my brain. Yes. We have Shadow Angry Throne Blob. Mm-hmm. We have Column of Light, mm-hmm. Phantom Dog Walker. Yes. Trivia is dog. Mm-hmm. Dog Walker gets pulled down to question mark. Yeah, it, it's it, it, gets pulled with him. You you could, from interpreting your visions in the past, I think you would be able to suss out that whoever she's attached to may have gotten caught up in the fight between those two factions there. Yeah. And then it seemed like some new player came in towards the end that was trying to, take to like, advantage, take advantage of the un- unrest. Okay, do I know what the two factions represent? It's you could probably start asking around town. It's you don't you don't get faces like they aren't. Whereas with trivia, you got her actual you know form that yeah, you'd be able yeah, to recognize. Yeah. Everything else seems more like metaphoric. Okay. Like you definitely like you've got enough clues where you could probably start, you know, going out and piecing shit together by asking around for information, or by yeah. offering it up to her. She might have some ideas. Okay. Um, but it's she is the only one that you're not getting in like, um, like dream logic or metaphor representation. Right. 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 Okay. So I think like as she comes back from the out from the inside out it's like she sort of comes back to life and like the warmth and like the, 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 her hands like soften again, like to become human hands, but her grip at that, at that moment, her grip is actually like very, very, very strong Mm -hmm. and like very tight. And her eyes sort of snap back and they're like huge. Um, almost like she's had the dilation stuff at the eye doctor or she's baked out of her skull. Um, so, so she, uh, um, looks directly at Trivia and says, she kind of takes a moment and looks at her and she says, somebody's got a hold of you. And she doesn't ask, It's none of this is asking a question. This is just like, you can choose to, you could choose to acknowledge this or not. Like, it's your funeral again, maybe. I don't know what that counts for demons. But she says, she sort of, and, and she's like breathing really heavily. And like, she's not like sweating or anything because it's almost like there's like, it's almost like she left this plane and realm and has sort of collapsed back in. So um, her body has no real indication that she's been through something difficult Mm -hmm. but she sort of is like looking at her and she's and her voice is kind of raspy and like she says you you someone's got a hold of you and they have gotten mixed up in something that has drawn an awful lot of attention and it is this infighting that is going to lead to your destruction People are leaving themselves open to outside influences. So I don't know what shakeup it is that you're expecting. But there's something coming from outside. And it's going to take your 
And she kind of looks at her, like, handler down. And gonna drag you right along with it. If I could be a bit forward with you. I mean... I know... I don't know if we could possibly become more intimately acquainted without my needing to visit a burn unit. We have a mutual acquaintance. And I know that acquaintance has done a very good job of keeping you off of most demons' radars. I only... Apparently not good enough, but... Well, it's... They and I don't always see eye to eye, so it's I do keep track of their comings and goings. No one else knows I'm here because I didn't know what you would tell me. Trivia still has a figure someone out question for you that she hasn't used. That's fine. How could she get your character to betray Preston Carver? Oh, jeez. I mean... It has to be to a point where Preston is is either so dangerous that it's like not no like he's dangerous he's become like an actual danger because I imagine right now he's kind of like a like he thinks that he's a big deal but he's really like he's everybody's stooge I think at this point but he's kind of got to become either dangerous enough to the point where she actually cashes in all of the chips that she has against him or um it it has to be like a a more a more um or he no longer has to be useful to her in Got some it. way like i imagine it like he either has to be dangerous to other people in the world to the point where like he's got to go i mean if the world is under like i don't know like demonic slavery nobody's gonna want be really wanting oracles around so you know yeah that's kind of what it would take she's not particularly enamored of preston Mm -hmm. um i imagine that it could go like he he wouldn't he wouldn't say no to spending some extracurricular time with her but like she she thinks he's just a scumbag Mm -hmm. who like she kind of has you know in a really tough spot um so yeah that would be what it would be he would either have to be dangerous enough or would no longer have to be useful to her let's get to let's just say to unfix myself from my patron I've dug into that quite a bit and it's best way that I've found so far in my contract is if I could find a suitable, more valuable replacement for their purposes than myself. Now you aren't shackled to your benefactor in the same way that I am to mine. He... It's no... It's no secret that Preston is trying to get out of his contract. Mm. It's also no secret that with what he does, he has quite quite a large number of souls in his downline. He's he's not a bad catch for a demon. If I could if he'd be amenable to meeting with my patron, if I could help facilitate that, he may get a contract with at the very least more time than he currently has or better conditions and that would get me out of my current job if he could replace me put me back on the free market and able to get the hell out of this town before shit hits the fan I imagine sort of Olive like definitely ponders this because I think like Olive is um I think Olive is a lot, she's a lot more savvy, I think, than a lot of people originally give her credit for. Like, being a mortal, 
I don't know if the people in like a lot of the supernatural circles like really think that she's got that much going on upstairs. Like Don certainly thinks that she's like some weird idiot, I think, but like um she sort of smiles and she says You know, Triv. Can I call you Triv? I'm gonna probably do it anyway. Um I happen to be on my way to a dinner meeting with Mr. Carver and I think he will probably be most amenable to this suggestion. Can you guarantee that your patron will at least tell Preston? That his contract, that switching contracts would grant him an extension. It's obviously I can't make concrete promises on the contract myself, but mm -hmm. I have negotiated several of them in the past. Um, I imagine that an extension would be considered an appropriate sign on bonus for Mr. Carver. <sighs> Well, I think, Triv, that this is probably going to be the easiest evening or the easiest job you've probably had in a long time. Is there a way that I can reach you? Oh, it's, um, I'll give you my number, but it's, I never, ha it's, I'm used to making we have to make some speedy visits for certain contracts, so just text me when you need me. Fair. I imagine she sort of gets, like, stands and sort of is subtly saying, like, this has been fun, but... Time to get the fuck out of my show. <laughs> well, it's also like, I'm gonna go, like, you know, collect. Mm -hmm. Uh so, yeah, I imagine, like, she sort of sees Triv up. And is there any indication that there have been other unseen creatures in the shop? Is anything busted or broken or, like, fucked up? Nope. Okay. You get the sense she might... If it, if it was the, the door ringing multiple times, you, you get the sense that she was doing that to try and get some attention downstairs. Okay. As opposed to the door uh, opening several times. Okay. Or, yeah. So she kind of sees her out and like on her way out, she picks up an aloe um, hand lotion that she sells for people from the sun. And she sort of hands it to Triv and says, I, I, I recommend, you know, liberal application two, three times a day. Um, trust me, kind of hands it to her. Mm -hmm. And she's got like her gloves and stuff back on and she's all ready to go. And I think she's going to go off, uh, go to the restaurant. Perfect. Yeah, I think at that point we will we'll go ahead and we'll cut back to Don. How, how, yeah. How, how are we doing? We're doing good. We're doing good. We're doing lovely. On a wonderful midnight stroll. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I, uh, you know, I thought about it, and I weighed the pros and I weighed the cons, and uh, I think I'm going to uh, hit me one of those hub moves there, there, oh, Mr. Yeah. Patrick. Yeah, do you want, would you yeah. like to, for the whole class, would you would you like to read us this special uh, move? Oh, sure, are we, are we playing popcorn now? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure thing. Uh, so I'm going to do the hub mood uh, written by uh, somebody, I, I, you know, I can't quite remember who uh, who, who wrote this. <laughs> for 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 everybody um the hub moves that we have are part of part of the city neighborhood that we're in um the hub itself has a pair of moves essentially a pair of moves that everybody gets to use regardless of their playbook um so everyone's got access to these fun guys um and and uh patrick didn't mention this because he's being modest but patrick wrote these um so yeah. Uh, so yeah, these these are real cool. I'm really excited to use one of them. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, under the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. When you search for a discrete meeting location amongst the sights and sounds of Bayshore, roll plus blood. 
On a hit, you find a suitable private spot for your needs. On a 7-9, your meeting place is either unobserved or uninterrupted. You tell uh, the MC which one. On a miss, the MC will tell you who you've upset by walking directly into their business. Um, and so this is going to be a roll with blood to find a, a meeting spot with Snow P. Um, so this is a 2d6 plus 2. So I'm a bloody boy, and that's a ten. So that's a, that is a full success. Yes. So it's the the you will not be observed or interrupted. You find exactly the place for your needs. Fantastic. T tell me about the kind of place you find. Uh, I think the place that I find is, um, uh. I, I think, yeah, I think the the uh, the place that that we go to is a, a local haunt that I really enjoy. Um, uh, it is a um, like bespoke fabric and and weird shit uh, shop called A Stitch in Time um, that is only open from uh, nine to six, that being at nine p.m. to six a.m. Um, so we're a little bit on the early side for it. It's one of those weird shops that's just like, ah, oh, fuck it, we'll have dumb hours for the sake of having dumb hours. Um, or, you know, sometimes you really need, like, some some sparkles at, at you know, 9 o'clock. We don't judge. We, we just, we're here to sell some fucking glitter. Glitter, that was the word. How did I forget the word glitter? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think that's that's where we go. Uh, now, did you did you pick up Snoopy on the way while you were walking around? Or is uh, no, I think no, I think Snoopy is gonna meet me there. All right. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. So Snoopy is Snoopy is there waiting for you already. She is, wonderful. I think she is um, perusing a shelf of different. Um, God, what are, what's the term for something that you would like bedazzle with, right? Like different rhinestones in like like a rhinestone, like, like gym, like the 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 yes. the, the the tongs and the yeah. the glue and stuff. She she's like essentially it's just like a big bucket of like reach in and pick up like a variety of like rhinestone gem type bullshit thing a hundred percent she's just yeah. like sifting through like like a kid at the like touch museum <laughs> just tactile sensation yeah. all day um yeah cool um well if uh if she's there then i will um if she's still whistling like she's supposed to be um i will try to harmonize with her as i walk up just so she knows that there is you know situation is about to change Oh, yeah. It, she 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 was still humming as directed. <laughs> oh, thank. Oh my gosh! Thank goodness you're here. Oh yeah, of course. It's no problem. How are? Uh, oh, we're in, we're in character. Are we? Yeah. Oh, no, what? No, no. This is me. This is me. This is always me. Hundred mm percent -hmm. HRD. Right. Um. You yeah. said you're uh, you're being followed. I haven't seen the statue like I normally would, like you've been helping me with, but it's I that feeling of being watched, you know the one like you could just uh -huh. tell. It's Oh yeah. I know when I'm being watched. I looked all around my apartment out the windows and everything, but I couldn't see I couldn't see them tonight, but I I know someone was watching. So I, I appreciate you meeting me. Yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's the least I could do, you know. I uh, I think that uh, maybe uh, if you are really worried about your safety uh, in this this uh, in town, I, I know uh, Ruby Tooth Bay can be a little uh, a little intimidating, a little uh, worrisome. Um, most of it is, is benign, but there, 
is cause to be to be slightly suspicious of most things here. Uh, what I would uh, recommend then, if you are uh, worried about your safety, you can always uh, come down to the to the RAR compound. We've uh, we've got some spare beds in the dormitory. Welcome to join. Uh, welcome to leave in the morning too. No contracts, no obligations. This is just a, a safe place for tonight. Um, if you would like, I can have some of my boys uh, uh, look around your area real good while you're not there. I appreciate that. I probably, I'm not sure if, um, I don't know if the accommodations are quite my style, but I'd appreciate the lookout. And it's, don't get me wrong, I'm perfectly... Well, not perfect. I'm capable of defending myself. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I don't have some place that I can escape off to if I need to. I'm more worried that... As far as I know, we still don't know what the fuck is up with the statue. Information's what I really would like as to why I have attracted its attention. At least so I know who to direct my ire at. Well, I... I'm sure you've told me as much as you can tell me about your purpose in town. And I'm happy that you're here to, to do some business with me while you're around. But, uh, you know, if there was uh, something anyone in your court might have done recently... Maybe uh, provoke any, any balances and uh, upset anything. I know I personally would uh, absolutely never dream of upsetting any of the court rituals. No, of course uh, not. Uh, but uh, you, um, you, you mortals, or I guess whatever you'd be considered right now, um, you wouldn't dream of playing court politics. That would be too silly. Um, I have no interest in court. I am. Uh, I've surpassed mortality. I am hunger at this point. But I am hunger with a little bit of reach and a little bit of power, uh, which uh, is pretty good uh, for everybody around, I'd say. Between, between, I don't know how, that being said, I don't know how much you keep up on the comings and goings of Fey politics. The Winter Court is, at least for the time being, doing just fine, and we have not done anything to upset anyone. But um, the summer court is in quite a bit of disarray. Um, oh, I'm what I'm doing in town is mainly just trying to keep an eye out for pot possible threats. Um, it's, they sus they suspect that the summer court issues came from inside the court, if you can believe that, but. Hmm. When one of the when one of the four seasonal courts um, takes a hit like that, it's not good for any of us. Well, uh, I got uh, I got one that uh, that owes me a little bit of a favor. Um, if you think a, a rendezvous with uh, with them would be be handy, a summer court, fair? Yeah, maybe. Um... It's they may the st the statue in the summer court may be unrelated. I that's the pro I just don't have enough information yet. But hmm. you no, know, as far as I know, the winter court has not stepped on any any toes recently, more so than just through normal business. Hmm. Well, uh... Look, okay, there's nobody else around. I'm gonna drop the bullshit. It's hard enough. I can throw it. I'm not. I don't have the bullshit for it tonight. Um, okay, let's let's do us a thing then. Um, how about um, uh, we could? Uh, well, um, I could always have somebody tail you. Um, see if they see anything. You know, you're you're aware that you're being watched. You'll know what they look like. Um, you won't really have to worry about uh, oh, who's that strange person over there in the in the olive coat and the, the drab jacket and mm -hmm. what have you. Um, 
not that <laughs> not that being bait is a deal breaker for me, but would the plan just be to snatch snatch up the statue? Um Well not really. No. No, I don't um don't really intend to just um uh pull a snatch and grab uh, on on a on a a golem uh, if if that uh that does tend to be the case if it is a golem. Uh, I, I think that a better plan would be for us to uh, maybe uh figure out what we can. See if it um see if it stays and watches you when you're not moving or see if it comes and goes. And if it comes and goes then we'll know where it's going and if we know where it's going we'll uh we'll know more about it than it knows where uh than it knows about us. I would say this isn't us matter since um if you feel like you're being followed and uh, now you and I are having a conversation, I probably am involved in it regardless of my opinion on the matter. So what I'm hearing is that we should go... Should we just go get wasted then? Yeah, I think it's a great plan. Let's, uh, let's go get drunk. They'll think we're uh, we're all helpless and all, uh, just staggering around like a bunch of uh, uh, blue-livered crows. But uh, no, no, no. So we're, uh, we're patiently waiting for an ambush. Mm -hmm. And it's... Um, now, it's, can you hold your liquor with Faye before? Has that come up? Uh, I am... Um, I'm pretty good at sober enough when need be. And just, uh, just a little, uh, a little snack, a little something to soak up the booze. I, uh, I can't say that I've ever, uh, I've ever shared the pleasure of uh, having a drink with you, but I, I certainly, uh, um, known a few autumns, if you will. Well, all right then. Let's. Do you have a place in mind? Should this be? Do we want I, to go uh... highly public, like crowded, or? Someplace more sparse where we're easier, we harder for us to get attention, but easier for us to spot someone. I um, I've got a place a little bit in between the two. I um, I've got some folks that owe me a few favors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a, you know, a place called the uh, I think Google Maps still has a freaking uh, the the shallow pool, but it's the shallow gene pool. Um, uh, no no one named Gene's ever owned the place. It's just some bad spelling, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, that we, um, I think I could probably have, have some, some kind of entertainment there in an hour or two, um, enough to draw folks there. Um, and of course I'll have some of my eyes there. So it'll seem like we're, we're just part of the crowd. Um, we're real innocuous, but, um, I'll have folks around making sure to, uh, to note if anybody's noting us a real incognitous kind of, uh, kind of operation, if you will. All right. It's, I, I think I remember driving past that place and assuming from the smell that it was abandoned. But if it's open, I'm happy. To oh, it's probably. I mean, it was. What was it? Was it was three, four p.m. It was definitely abandoned then. Yeah, they haven't sobered up yet. Um, I mean, shit, it's nine now. They probably already sobered and on the other way home. Uh, but I, I think we'll be. I think we'll be okay. I could probably uh, work something together for us. Pretty good. You ever heard of a band called uh, uh, the Dented Bucket? No. Uh, neither have I, but I got a bunch of guys that'll pretty much play it or any fucking banner I give them, so uh, it'll probably be a fun time to see what they come up with. <laughs> got well, a better name? You know, I... Give me some time, and let's... Fuck, that's the one thing we don't have. I'm calling George now. Uh, yeah, can you, can you get a new show going? Yeah, well, let's... Yeah, right. cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, doesn't actually pull out a phone or anything. Um, he's just doing this. And, um, all right, we should be set. No problem. Yeah. So I think she is all on board for going with you to the, <laughs> to the shallow gene pool. Cool. I will, I will send some text off to try to get some kind of, uh, event. If there's some kind of like yeah. sideshow person or, or some, some folks in the bar that'll play, you know, some of the rented in instruments for a couple of beers and I'll just throw a stupid headline on there and promote it on the, the raw social accounts. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out if there's some if this would. So you're trying to essentially, you know, hype this up, hype up your and Snoopy's presence, and see if we draw out the statue, correct? Yeah. Um, so I think personally that this is uh, what's it called? Um, this is a cold-blooded. 
Um, is that, is that a special vampire thing? It is, yeah. Um, when you keep your cool by flaunting mor uh, mortal social conventions and expectations, roll with blood instead of spirit. I am throwing together a party on the spot with a fictitious band to observe a, a golem that is stalking someone. Yeah, and it's so... To give, to give everybody a bit, since this will be our first keep your cool roll, um, a keep your cool is <laughs> when things get real and you keep your cool, tell the MC the situation you want to avoid and roll with spirit. On a 10 plus, all's well. On a 7 to 9, the MC will tell you what it's going to cost you to avoid that thing happening. Um, and on a miss, it's a miss. So it's it sounds like what we're trying to avoid is, you know, maybe a you could i mean it's it's your move so you correct me if i'm wrong maybe like a threat getting to snopey or going yeah. unnoticed yeah yeah a threat getting snow snopey coming to harm uh, okay. is the is the threat yeah um like um ideally uh something uh would happen uh and then it could be prevented i think that would be the best case scenario would be for something to try to pop off and for uh Don or one of his boys to uh to 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 hop in. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. So let's and your vamp move is you get to roll with it's with blood instead of spirit, right? It is. All yeah. Right. Let's let's do it. And I'm a boy with some good blood. All right, so that's gonna be a plus two on top of this. <gasps> oh no! It's five. Oh no. no! That is that is our first full miss of the evening. Oh, that's a, I think that's our first full miss of the whole thing. Yep. Well, yeah. did, they, did somebody make a miss on their their rumors roll? Leland did. Oh. <laughs> well, shit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So on a miss, and I I get to make a move. Essentially, bad shit happens. Do Do, do I get experience? No, not in this. Not in this game. Oh no. <laughs> That, this is so not one of the play. Cool. This oh, is one of no. the few powered by the apocalypse games where misses do not get you experience. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Um. Cool. Yeah, so, so, I mean, not cool. The opposite of cool. No, suck. it's fine. Everything will be fine. Tell me. Tell me about this party. Tell me about how things are. Um. You know, proceeding once you and Snoopy get to the shallow pool. Um. I think that um uh the 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 dented bucket um is just like i hit the sweet spot of folks at the right hour with everything like and it is absolutely packed like i think he was hoping to get you know like 85 percent capacity it's definitely 115 120 percent capacity right now it is packed to the absolute gills standing room only like tables move to the fucking side um and it is a little bit too much i think they're he's getting too much attention and it's he's kind of getting lost in the like the celebrity of shaking people's hands and and meeting folks and uh getting a little bit lost in kind of kind of the, the celebrity of uh, of everything Yeah, let's see. I don't like this quiet. No, it's fine. It's so the band is going. Um, the it is way more crowded than you expected. Has have you been with Snoopy the whole time? I've tried to stay within arm's reach of Snoopy. Mm -hmm. Um, um yeah i yeah. think sh at least initially um i think the night probably started out with a drinking contest between the two of you mm -hmm. or at least a brief one mm -hmm. um i guess how have you been keeping her occupied otherwise um uh, i i have been probably um, when i have not been indulging my desire to be uh to be seen um I, I have probably been telling her um, fictitious things about the the clients 
about the the clientele of, of this place mm -hmm. and like um oh yeah that's um that's three foot lou um it's not because he's short or anything he's like five foot eight uh, he's just um you know he had three feet uh, one was on his ass and um it was cut off because uh, it said he was always kicking his own ass every time he sat down um and just uh, just bullshit like that yeah i think i think around <laughs> what the end of one of your anecdotes um you see um a face that you already know you see lane um she's one of Gosh. the wolves she's your she's a wolf she's new talent for you um you know young tw uh younger um kind of like in her early 20s um just long curly like curly wild blonde hair um mm -hmm. i don't know if you've seen her transform yet but you know definitely you could you could probably call it a main at some points mm -hmm. um and she is she is wa she is walking with an intensity you have not seen in her before um oh, and coming straight at the two of you ah oh, fuck me Ah, oh, shit. Um. Oh, fuck. All right. Hello. How are you doing tonight, love? I, I am. Um, shit. Um. Uh. I see a uh, challenger is approaching. Yeah, she walks. I think it's kind of the position why she's coming towards you. Snoopy mm -hmm. is a little bit forward to your left. Mm -hmm. She brushes right past Snoopy, kind of puts an arm to shove her out of the way, and that's when you see fangs just coming out of the mouth as she lunges at your neck. Ah, oh, shit. And I, yeah. I think that's where we'll call this week's session. Ah, oh, shit. All right, well, that's, uh, you've definitely given me something to chew on there, Pat. What a Listen, so you're gonna have you're gonna have puns prepared for the end of every episode, right? Uh, you know, just, kind of, just just Carlos from Magic School Bus style. <laughs> have him ready to go. Oh, oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I forgot about that. Wow, that probably played a really formative impact on my childhood sense of humor. <laughs> I had access to a middle school library. We had all the Magic School videos. Magic School Bus. Yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah. Well, as we are as we're wrapping up for the evening, do you want to do you want to give an outro, tell everybody about yourself again, and then where they could find you, and then? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, yeah, so I'm Zan. Uh, I'm a professional DM and content creator for Five E World of Darkness, powered by the Apocalypse, and a bunch of other great stuff out there. Uh, you can find me uh, on Patrick's channel or on Taxer's channel, like uh, the the wonderful uh, wonderful time that was tonight. Um, you can also find me. Um, Central time, uh, 4 a.m. on Friday and 4.30 a.m. on Tuesday over on Polished Cryptids. And um, again, Central time, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, over on the Black Feather Guild um, for some uh, some Raven's really fun games as well. Um, additionally, uh, you can find me on my own Twitch, which is uh, the same as my Twitter, InsanityTTRPG, or my website, InsanityGaming.com. Um, I do... Uh, games and stuff. Like, a couple of days ago I built a character um, on stream with some audience participation, did the whole graphic design of the character and like built out a, a custom cleric domain of temptation uh, on camera. And that was a lot of fun. It was uh, you know, about an hour and a half, two hours. It was, it was a real good time. Um, and if you want to find it, that's available on the Insanity Discord. And I'm going to stop pitching. Oh, um, I do actually. Um, I have uh, there will be a show adjacent to this um, covering the weekly antics of uh, the Raw, uh, RAR uh, wrestling organization, uh, as well as something else that hasn't been revealed yet. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, oh, I'm, I did a Kickstarter too, and it's on Twitter. You should follow that. It's it's really great, and it's a thing. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, historian, please. Alrighty, once again, I am IC Historian, every place I feel like being found on this fair internet. Uh, I am here now, I'm beginning my Sundays in Residence in Attactrix land, uh, and you can find me every other Friday, uh, so in two weeks from this Friday, for those of you North America dwelling friends on Polish Cryptids channel.
And basically any other place where people forgot to lock the windows. <laughs> There's that. That's where I am and what I do. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I make fun of public figures and mutter about education. If you feel like really strongly about that, we should maybe, you know, maybe talk to somebody. I don't know. But in the interim, follow me on Twitter. Other than that, that's what I got. Perfect. And I'm Pat. I'm a Tatric on Twitter and Twitch, like the name on the channel that you're on now. Uh, we'll be here every Sunday for, you know, at least the next two months playing this Urban Shadows campaign. You'll get to meet our whole cast next week, I believe. I believe we'll have uh, our two other members who couldn't make it tonight joining. Um, and yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I hope I hope everybody is enjoying this dip into Urban Shadows and I'm, I'm excited to do more. Um but yeah, that's it for me. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna send a raid over to a friend of mine, Grant, who's playing who's playing some Armello right now. Um, and we're gonna go 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 give him a go give him a wave and have a good night, everybody. We got a raid cry. Oh, that's a thing that people do, isn't it? <laughs> I don't. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Okay, I don't. Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, I don't. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>